Hello everybody, welcome to Neo 2. In this we're going to go through um, the basics of getting a beginner mage build going. Um, it's a little bit difficult for us because you don't get your first point for quite a while in the game and you don't get very many items to try and acquire one early. I will give you guys a suggestion though through the video. First up, I don't know why I'm already in the blacksmith, let me uh, let me go somewhere a bit, a bit more reasonable here uh, so we can show you guys kind of how the build's looking. So this is obviously aimed at level 50. Um, I recommend being here by the end of the first act. This is what I'm going to be using for the walkthrough. Uh, what I recommend doing is, to start with, putting all uh, well loads of points into constitution um, and heart. Spr sprinkle as you're feeling comfortable. Bear in mind that constitution um, is going to give you extra damage with the switch glaive. So this is going to help you kill things easier and stay alive easier. So constitution is basically our survival stat. Heart is obviously important for key. Um, I feel like you need to make a decision between heart and courage. Um, the difference between the two, obviously your secondary weapon is going to change. Uh, in addition to that though, um, heart gives you extra damage with the bone and a larger stamina pool which makes it better for things like blocking and allows your stamina to last longer, or key should I say. Um, <laughs> don't, get me, don't get me mixed up with the actual stamina of the game, I'm talking about like our little bar of build-up resource. Um, or you can have your key recover faster, which is kind of cool, uh, and have a minor buff to your magic power. Um, I've gone with heart. It allows me to, to block things a little bit more effectively, which is kind of nice. Um, but I think there's a, there's a trade-off to be had there. You could try and go with both, but I feel like um, spreading your stats too thin just results in um, an ineffective build, which is how it was feeling. Um, when I was kind of first starting out with the character, so. Uh, obviously, as a side note to that, you're going to want to put points into magic. But I would, I would probably suggest you don't really want to put points here until you actually have some spells to use. Um, it is obviously going to boost the damage of the switch cleave. That's all you're going to get out of it until, until you actually have a spell to use. And so, uh, constitution, in my opinion, way more important to start with. Um, and get used to kind of being a melee based character for a while um, until you actually uh, are able to complete some of the some of the uh, on Mio specific missions you're going to be stuck with stuck with melee anyway so just get used to that idea uh, in terms of armor then <coughs> it's pointless me looking at my, my equipment because I've changed it since then but you have got two sets or two types of armor um, that are going to be relevant to you right and I say this term loosely uh, we are unfortunately not like the ninja we don't get uh, power or damage percentage boosts on any armor for quite a while uh, so really straight out of the gate the only two armor set well I suppose there's three but the two that I would I would somewhat recommend is the irregular troops hat um, it, well the irregular troops set which will give you around 5% extra amrit so it's just going to allow you to level, uh, level quicker earlier on in the game which which is, is no bad thing, uh, and it's just simply more relevant than, than some of this stuff. Um, I ended up using the Scout armor, uh, which is maybe marginally better gameplay-wise, um, just because of the use of the stealth, so it means that you get uh, less detection from enemies, which is kind of nice, you can sneak around, particularly past like ranged enemies and stuff. kind of helps with that. And it actually has one better toughness, which reduces the amount of key damage we take when we're blocking and that kind of thing. So there's a minor benefit, maybe gameplay-wise, going for the scout base plate, um, or you can get yourself some extra levels out of the, the regular troop set. The same could be said about the gold, uh, the thief's plated one, um, to get extra gold, but um, has lower defense, and I would say I prefer leveling to uh, to getting gold, even though both are, both are obviously important. So maybe mix it up, it's up to you. Um, other than that, in the beginning game, once you unlock the blacksmith you are able to get the Sahara garb smithing text which can drop from any of the uh, the axe wielding dudes so you get a couple in the in the second level where you unlock her um, so you'd have to farm those get that to drop and then you'll be able to get the faceplate out of that set it is only the faceplate that's any good for us uh, so the extra 14 key is really really good the set bonus I'm not too bothered about we get some drop rate stuff against yokai very very specific um, but as you'll see like over here um, it's just, yeah, very, very yokai specific. But the 14 key on the on the actual faceplate is very useful. Um, so maybe consider that. So we've had a start, we've had a look at stats, we've had a look at gear. Um, let's take a look at re recommendation for skills then. Um, so let me 
let me get my skills up here while I'm messing around. But it's fine. Fine. I like doing things like, things like this off the cuff. I'm sorry if it's uh, not the most professional thing, but I never call myself professional. So when you get your first point, um, you will get one guaranteed in the the Beast of Bo Beast Born of Smoke and Flames mission. Uh, it's upstairs in the final building. Obviously, it's in the walkthrough for those that actually want to go and go and find out what that is. Um, and you can earn one in Forest of Elden Darkness, but it's very long-winded. So, in that mission, uh, right at the very beginning, the NPC that goes in with the monkey boy, uh, if you talk to him a few times, it gives you um, a guardian amulet which does damage, uh, and you gain proficiency points by doing damage with Omnia skills. So, if you desperately want one early, you can go in there and, and try to farm it, but it's, it's just quicker to go through here. Once you've done that, I uh, highly recommend your first skill being the Lightning Talisman. Now, the reason for that is um, it's quite effective against a lot of enemies for a lot of the game. Its status effect is Paralysis, which slows enemies down, which can make some of them a little bit easier, easier to handle, and it does damage. I went for this first. Don't do it. It's really not helpful. <laughs> Go for the talisman, um, and then I would, after that, I can't remember which unlocks when now, but after that I would go with water talisman. You can leave fire for quite a while, We've not, I've not even kind of started specking up here yet. Uh, the really cool stuff up here doesn't doesn't unlock until a little bit later. So, um, lightning, water, those are going to be the, the good ones, uh, and you'll actually be able to get life leech as well, so that's a pretty nice one as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at some of these in a second. Uh, lightning, sh so, so the shot abilities don't unlock until you can do um, Path of the Omnia mission in the dojo. So just be aware of that. These aren't going to unlock until a little bit later. Um, in, particular, in particular, Barrier is amazing. And Sloth is... Although Barrier does unlock, actually. So you can actually get down here. You'll need to do Purification to get this. But start with Lightning. You want to come down this way, and you want to come down this way um, to get Sloth. Uh, maybe barrier as well. Barrier is pretty good because it makes your stamina regenerate faster, which gets around the courage problem. Um, so yeah, definitely lightning, definitely water. Uh, life leech just makes life easier. Um, lightning shots. That's later on. You can't get that straight away. Uh, so maybe you'd come across for cursed heaven, cursed heaven, and get yourself the barrier one. Those are going to be your main spells. Uh, and you're going to want to use them as much as you possibly can. The more you, the more damage you do with them, the uh, the more on Mio, on Mio proficiency you'll gain, um, <clears throat> which will basically just allow you to to actually continue being a mage. Um, the cool thing is your magic stat will then basically have um, a lot of use for you because it's going to up the damage that your buff does. It's going to up the amount that you can attune, I suppose you'd say. Uh, ready jutsu, isn't it? And um, obviously, it's going to up the damage of the Switchglaive, which does result in some pretty good damage in the early game. Um, so, once that's done, then, and once you've done the, once you've done the Viper's Sanctum mission, you'll then have unlocked in your dojo the Onmyo Novice mission. I don't know why it gives you all those amulets right there, they'd be way more useful before that. Uh, and that will unlock kind of the second wave of abilities, which is where which is where life starts getting interesting for us, right? So this is where now we're able to get the shot, so we actually have some range damage with the, with the spell. It does take a long time to cast to begin with. Uh, we can speed this up later though, which is probably what we're going to do. You have a couple of options in terms of that, you can have cast faster or you can have it last longer. You'll probably go with cast faster. Um, and so then we get the uh, the second round, which allows us to get the sloth that we were talking about earlier. You are going to need to come from purification to get that. Um, I suppose pure mind is actually kind of useful as well, because we get some resistance to uh, to the yokai realm. That combined with the stuff in here, we can actually be pretty much not caring about the yokai realm, right? Because that's like 14% plus 15%, so we're like almost 50% ignoring, ignoring the yokai realm, which is quite nice. Um, so with that, um, once you're at this point, continue focusing on, in my opinion, lightning and water. That's because in the future, uh, so looking at where my gear is now, I don't think I have any of, any of what I'm going to recommend you guys to have. Um, so from the scout's gear, you're going to want to generally 
um, move towards the merchant's robe, merchant's set, should I say? Um, it just gives you some some decent bonuses. In particular, if you can get enough of the parts, the key recovery speed is going to be nice for us. Um, and then after that, or maybe in competition with that, I don't know how you want to see it. Let's say you want to, if you spec into lightning, then maybe the the uh, the merchant's robe stays better. But if you spec into water, the ferryman's the ferryman set, which we're going to get in the second act. Um, will actually heal us for all of the water damage done, which just gives us huge synergy uh, and allows us to um, basically, if you put life leech on something and then attack it with water damage, you are just gonna, well, <laughs> the enemy's barely gonna be able to scratch you. So uh, we're kind of aiming at being pretty much a health build here. It's, it's clearly aimed at being um, being a light build, just because any extra points that you want for your armor are gonna go into skill, uh, and that's just basically gonna mean that. Um, yeah, you're going to be going into light armor, just because that kind of works better with the switch glaive. Um, so let's take a look at how this works. Then I'm going to skip to an enemy. Okay, guys. So we're just going to go through a bit of an encounter here, uh, just to kind of show you guys a little bit about how the how the build works. Now I'm not going to teach you guys to suck eggs. Uh, and how to use like a weapon and stuff. But just get used to your range. Uh, we have the ability to A, we've got good reach, and we can close pretty well. If you uh, use the dodge attack to your, your advantage, uh, you're going to have a pretty good time. Next up, we're going to look at Sloth. Just look at how much slower he is. Um, and the coolest thing is, like, we, we can do that like almost double to him, right? Stupid dark room everywhere. Right. He's not gonna let me proc it on him, is he? Right, let's really slow you down. Slow your roll. There we go, right, now you get that way. Look how slow he is. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, so that's gonna be your go to strategy is to just make it so that things can't hit you because they're so slow. And then go in for the finish. Uh, that works on like the majority of the enemies, unless they have um, specific onmyo resistances or uh, or uh, if they have uh, lightning resistance. But it's very rare that enemies are, Im are immune to both, so you should be able to slow most enemies down um, and get a pretty significant advantage over them, particularly with how how quickly the um, how quickly this weapon can can close distance. It's uh, it's pretty cool actually. So hopefully this was helpful to some of you guys that are earlier in the game. Hopefully it explains kind of how you can get this to work because um, it is very. What's the worst? It's quite sparse at the beginning of the game. We don't have an armor set that's very good. Um, it's difficult to get abilities to do lots of damage so that we can actually get the points to start building up. So um, that is all good. I may actually do a video on and try and find a place where we can actually farm the points. If that's something you guys would like, let me know in the comments. In any case, I'll be continuing on with the walkthrough, so I'll see you all in the next video.